You are now tuned in to the Project 365 Experience. It is with an amazing pleasure that I get to welcome the amazing Gifty K to the to the podcast. Um, you guys may see her on social as Baller Mom Gifty. Thank yes. you for taking the time and joining. Thank you very much, Coach O. <laughs> Listen, um, we we before we hopped on, we were just talking about different things, and um, I want to dive in right away and just ask you as being someone that has seen a lot of different things, right? Where do you hope that um, initiatives like Baller Mom, and we're going to dive into what it is, but initiatives like Baller Mom, what do you think we can send sports in the future? Wow. Send sports in the future. Yeah. Where do you, th right. where do you think we could go with it? Well, I, honestly, I want people to realize that Sport is more than just the athlete and coaching. Um, don't forget the parents part of it too, because we play a role in it. But I want it to be people to realize that it's not the it's not a one avenue or one journey to just become an athlete or be an athlete. That there is multiple facets to it, and every stage of it, whatever it is, mm -hmm. hard, easy, we gotta embrace it. So where I want it to be. A, especially in Canada, is when somebody finally says, I'm an athlete or this, like you get that pride from it, you know, as opposed to somebody saying I'm a lawyer or a scientist or a space engineer or whatever, like that respectability that is given to those type of professions or that field. I want the sports community to eventually gain that respectability and not only those who are seen on TV making whatever that they do, but at all levels, whether it be in the backyard that they're practicing, in the community center, in school gyms, or in a big, you know, um, open facility. So yeah, that's where I'm hoping we can get to. Yeah, let's re let's let's reverse engineer because okay. you have a great in you have a great initiative with Baller Mom, which I've been reading up about, and I oh, want you to be you. able to I want you to be able to you know, use this platform to talk a little bit about what it is and how did you get the idea to start it? Thank you so much. First of all, yeah, I should have said thank you for having me. And yes, <laughs> we did have a really pre-interview discussion, yeah. candid conversation, which will stay within us because I respect everybody's <laughs> thoughts and opinions. Yeah, so, do, so do um, I. <laughs> so, it's good. But um, I started Baller Mom um, out of curiosity and also frustration. Um my boys started, they've really done all types of community sports, whether it be swimming, keyboarding, taekwondo, soccer. Um, but when we wanted to transition into playing basketball, it was weird because all I can get across from like the city of Toronto's Parks and Recs, I'm like, okay, like 45 minutes every Tuesday, Thursday is really not that conducive. I can see that they have this to do more how do I go about it how do I find a team and I'll, I'll be you know I'll be asking the city nothing I'll be asking the school nothing mm -hmm. I google search and you, I see all these names so and so basketball and I will call and some of the phone numbers were not in service then uh, as I was reading I realized oh there's Ontario basketball so I went on Ontario basketball's website and I see oh after many digging clip 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 I realized oh they have a list of teams I'm looking, okay, which one is closest to me? Because of course they're young. I wasn't thinking of going all the way to like the boondocks of Oshawa to go mm -hmm. for a game back then. Like, you know, school is done, pick them up at daycare or whatever. You want something closer. It just took me forever to be able to say, oh, wow. So there are clubs here. There are teams. This is what they do. So eventually I came across one and said, okay, fine. How does that work? Oh, we have a house league. We would just come Saturday to come training. I'm like, okay, we're going to start from that. So from those, as I was, we were bringing them and realizing, realize, okay, they actually like it and they're good. I want them to play the way we were playing at the soccer level. We were going to different stadiums and playing. How do mm -hmm. we 
I with basketball because I knew it exists. So the more I was finding it, I was like, okay, this is great. But then each time I find it, I would tell another parent, they're like, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that? I was like, oh, it was here. So eventually one person's like, oh, you know, if you might yeah. want to create something that you could just easily share. I was like, oh, like what? Right. And they're like, oh, maybe Instagram. Like people want to actually go Instagram to find information. She's like, you'll sure, be surprised. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's true. And slowly I just out of whatever I find, I was just like, okay, this is it. This is the club. This is the team. This is where they're located. This is where they're doing the tryout. This is much the fee. I call, I talk to the actual coach there that you could talk to. Like there's an actual manager. So I was just doing all those back end researching and giving it to the parents based on wherever they were are. I'm like, okay, you try it out. If it works for your kid, great. So it's just, I guess you could call like my CSI. Investigative, <laughs> yeah. you know, one in thing, yeah. So, yeah, and it slowly eventually has just got into a lot bigger than I, I thought it would be, but I'm good, I'm good with it because I find the more as I get the more information I find, the more I like to share. Because what good does it do for me to just hold on to it if I'm not sharing with others? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think, um especially for elite athletes um you know and we talked about the word elite and how it's used very loosely right so yes i'm an elite uh, parent by the way elite parents <laughs> <laughs> but just let's let's talk about just sports especially youth sports right yeah um a lot of times the part like the way i approach um coaching my kids is always like there's the coach, there's the player, and there's the parent, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 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 a bit different where I like to I, you know, I love I know a lot of coaches don't necessarily wanna open up that line of communication. It's more like they want to have their discussions with the kids only. But me, yeah, I like mm -hmm. talking with the parents, you know, because I think right. I think we all have to be able to work together if the athlete is at the center of what we really want to do. Exactly. So I really got intrigued with your page because I think you do a really good job at linking how parents can stay involved. Yes. With and still the stay back. <laughs> and exactly. And the continual yeah. development of yeah. this athlete. Yes. It, it, I, honestly, I take it the analogy of student, teacher, parents. Okay. When we send our kids, and I say to everybody that I talk to, when I send my kids to school, I am not outside the window or at the back of the class, wondering if the teacher's going to teach them four plus four is eight or one plus one is two. I take it that this teacher is well-educated, they got their purpose, their certification, they're doing what they have to do and they're teaching them and my sons are there learning and you know becoming good citizens of the student system. Same thing with the sports. Where are you going through the tryouts? When you're deciding the team you're on, you know why you're trying to get to. Most parents have an idea of what they expect from their kids or what they expect from that club to give. And sometimes you do get it and sometimes you don't get what they promise you. But that comes in in terms of where we have to have that open communication with them. You have to understand that, okay, this coach has how many? 15 different players, just like a teacher has up to 20, 25 students per class. My child is special. Your child is special. We're all special. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So what makes us unique is that open communication. So I'm not going to come and undermine you and be like, hey, blah, 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 because you're a human being. If I'm going to come retaliate at you and cuss at you, what are you going to do? You're going to be like a turtle. You're going to put your shell up. You're going to mm -hmm. be like, okay, X, that parent is definitely not coming back to my club next year. <laughs> That's not, like, you know what I mean? It could become a personal thing. So it's not about begging, but it's about having that open communication and being honest, first of all, with my child's actual level and their skill and potential and what they're getting and then where the coach is seeing it and having that open communication with them. So my gap in there is just have that open communication on a consistent, not every single day, oh, at the end of every game, 24 hours. Well, I timed it. He only played two minutes or he played 20 minutes and he did this and did that or I have a record and you become your own statistician because if you're going against the kid uh, towards a coach like that, that coach is going to be like, you want to do my job, you know? So you got to give it time. You got to realize 
year over year, game over game, how is your own child developing? And this is where I personally started doing my own recording. And not just to prove to anybody, but to show that, hey, I can see that you're, you're getting better or this thing that your coach drew, you didn't do it, can you work on it, whatever. So the communication with the coaches, you have to be honest about it and I have to approach to you as a human, first of all. Mind you, every coach is different. They're human beings and some of them will listen, but still will not do ish. Mm. <laughs> Could care less. Yeah. <laughs> and same thing with the parents. I'm sure you... you um, Bill or Johnny or whoever, they, they, he's not doing it. Can you help out? And you're like, well, yeah, yeah, no problem. The parents will be like, well, that's your job. You know what I mean? It has mm -hmm. to be an open dialogue because at the end of the day, it's that child that's in the middle. We all, yeah. if we all want the same thing for them at the true potential, then we have to find a way to work towards it, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. And we also have to agree to disagree. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be the same way all the time. It has to be agreed to disagree without undermining or insulting. Because yes, mm -hmm. parents are connected, but coaches are connected more. And I always say that to the parents. <laughs> yeah. So it, this is very interesting because again, like you, like you say, you know, at some point the ego kicks in, whether we like it or not, the ego kicks in. Right. So it's like, and I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of parents mess up opportunities for some kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what is the proper way that parents should potentially communicate with a coach? The way you would like to be talked to. Like mm -hmm. I would say, if you don't like it to talk, if you don't want somebody to come in and cut, cut you up at your job every minute, then don't do that. But at the same time, yes, some coaches are a whole, I would say, um, they won't listen and that's okay. Um, so approach it in a three stage way. You know, it's like, uh, before you get fired, you get a warning letter, then you get a second warning, and then you get the third one and you're like, eh, none. Right. Being in the Toronto sector, there's multiple teams. There's multiple opportunities, multiple tryouts. So if Club A is not filling your need for that age group. Mm -hmm. OK, what I would say is whenever that team is playing a game, look at the team you're facing. How are you liking that team? How do you like the dynamic? How do you like the coach's approach at that moment? Is that something you feel that that will work for your child or for you personally? Because if that's the case, then you could slowly just say to this coach, you know, we're going to finish the season with you. Thank you. This is not working. This is not what I thought it was in a respectful way or whatever, and move on. Unless that coach come in at you and they're very offensive, of course, you have to have your guard up too, because at the end of the day, we have to care for our kid. I'm not saying we have to sucker up to the coaches at, for the sake of our kid, because we have we are we're the first protectors. But when we are putting the, our kids in the coach's hand, we also we want them to be an extension of us. And when that doesn't happen, that's where the, the hurt comes in more so than the ego. We get more hurt because we realize we wanted you to help my son or my daughter get to this level. And you're not doing any of that. Your attention is on these people and what's going on or too much attention on my son and not enough on the team. And this is all about you, whatever the situation is. So. I would say you approach it in a in an adult to adult discussion way outside the court, first of all, <laughs> outside of the game, wait 24 hours after the game, send a text, hey coach, whenever you can, I'd like to chat with you. Do you mind? Um, have your points ready if that's easier for you to go by so you can stick to the the words, because sometimes emotions run through and we may say things that we can't take back, right? Um if you want to depend on your personality, you know, do a PowerPoint, whatever, have video, time it, but be willing, understand that, yes, the coach may have, give you whether 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it depends what their timing is, but also be willing to listen to what they're saying and say, okay, now that I've said my piece, you say your piece, okay, do we bring in the child in, do we bring our student in to see what they're saying, what can we do together, and if both sides are not willing to come together for something, then it's a relationship that's not supposed to be meant to be. You can always find another team to go mm. on that definitely fits the need for your child that you're looking for. The only thing, just be careful. Like I said, we have a lot of teams there in Toronto, but it's a, still a small network. It's yeah. big, but it's small. 
<laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. and that's something that I want to say that I don't think, um, I don't know if parents realize that part too, where it's like, like you said, as much as as coaches, like um, the community is small and we're always going to see the same players as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think parents realize that coaches we bump into each other all the time, right? So yep. all it takes is for one bad experience and people mm -hmm. talk, eh? Yes. Nobody wants a bad kid. Nobody wants a troubled kid. Maybe the kid is good, but I hear that a lot. That kid is good, but, but like his parents. That but but his, is what hurts you. Yeah. yeah. And at the same time, there are some coaches that we know should not be coaching as parents. Mm -hmm. We say it, but they're still getting it because it's mm -hmm. a shortage of coaches and some of the other club owners are they have good relationships some of those have to be as their way to keep the job going um and that's fine and that's your thing but knowing that and you know that person that doesn't work with your child okay. by all, save your money put them <laughs> into another developed game like don't don't put your child through that just because you want to be part of that program even though the coach is not aligned to your what you want or what you think your child needs like uh -huh. don't torture yourself that way you always have yeah. that option to switch. Always. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So so let me ask you this. We we talked a little bit about it, but we're we're in a era that okay. where there are so many options everywhere. Right? There's options yes. for coaches, there's options yeah. for players, options for parents, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is the balance between <laughs> balance? Yeah, the ba the balance between we gotta fight through and teach the child that he has to fight through adversity mm -hmm. to this is not working and mm -hmm. it's time to move on. Like, what is the role of the parent in that situation, um, and how can they help? And how can they help the the I'm, the child I'm understand the one, that? I'm paying the fee. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. Uh, Oh, that's the first thing okay <laughs> money like, that will talk we're doing the driving we are adjusting our personal schedule during the week take you to practices and stuff and adjust it some practices are eight some practices are seven some are nine depending on the age and the gym and the location okay but the balance is you have to have that honest conversation with the child like before like right now trial season is happening for summer if you are in the current team and you personally feel that this is not fulfilling. It hasn't fulfilled the needs of your child. You haven't seen the potential that you see in your child excel in this team. And now you want to switch to another team. That's a conversation you need to have to, with that child. Even if the, the, your son is in grade six, even if your child is in grade 11, even your child is in grade 12 or grade nine, whatever grade it is, you need to include that child in it too. Because at the end of the day, it's them that's going to be doing playing. And say, hey, um, Jessica, you know, this is great. We had a really good time with this season. This is great. This team, oh, my God, you made so many good friends. Um, there's another team here that's trying out. This is, a, you know, where they play. You can see some of your friends sometimes if you make it. So they might be on the opposite team and all. But this is okay. You got to say it in a way that your child understands that they can't be in that one same position as they may be. It's not like you know, similar to the school, as I said, where you start in kindergarten, you graduate in the same school. Mm -hmm. But in the sport, you can be moving from season to season, team to team. So start with that child and start with yourself. Is it, am I making this move because me and the coach had, you know, butt-headed? Am I making the team, uh, the change because getting the many hours that they were supposed to get in terms of practice and training, didn't get that many play time, didn't get that many um, games that was promised, didn't get that many, um, you know, just on the bench too long, or there's too many injuries, too many players, whatever your reasons are, if you're making that switch, go through your pros and cons. Because as much cons you may have get on this team, it may be worse on the team you're trying to get into. And, and you don't mm -hmm. know until you get there. Right. Until you make that deposit, which is often non-refundable, you don't know until you're there. Right. So you have to have that candid conversation. Check with yourself within the family and with your child first. 
And then if you have a, a trusted person within the basketball world that may not really be in your child's age group, play in that circuit or somebody a little bit above or somebody who's gone through it, get their opinion too and say, hey, this is the situation I'm going through and this is what I'm leaning towards. What do you think? You know, and get that perspective and then make your decision that best fits your child for that season because the season to season. Mm -hmm. Game to game, team by team, season by season, it's not always going to be 100% perfect, right? But you, the conversation, that honest, candid conversation always has to be had. It's just like you said, New Year's resolution. You have to set a resolution for yourself, for your child, for that team. Uh, because when that deposit is done, you don't get it back. <laughs> and it's not cheap deposit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for me, it's times two. So whatever it is, we multiply it times two because we have two boys. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but that's, that's so interesting to hear you talk about that because like, like it's, it's a different generation. I think it's a different no. generation. We're dealing with a different generation of athletes now. Yeah. And, you know, what I've noticed me personally through my experiences is that a lot of them mm -hmm. have trouble, like kind of like facing that adversity. Yes. Right. So it's like, how do we, like, what are some things that parents can do to help this child face that mm -hmm. adversity? And how can the coach assist in that? Because a lot of times the reality is this, and I can speak for the, uh, being, a, for being around the young men, young boy side. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of it is like, you know, fight through it. Like, yes. oh, we say, we call them soft. We say, oh, you're not fighting through. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do we help with that? I, again, you have to know your child, right? And me putting my child on the team. Oh, my child, he's the best. He's good. When he was in grade four, he made all the big shots. Everybody passed the ball, blah, blah, blah. So get this in your head, blah, blah, blah. And you're always going to be the one that everybody goes to that you get everybody gets taller and you're so short or you get taller and people are short and weight is changing hormone things like they're going through all these things personally um mm -hmm. within themselves so I have to have that honest conversation it's okay I'm gonna remember when I was a teenager but I'm glad I'm getting, getting to see my children go through this girl spurt what does it really mean? And yes, I'm in Mohawk, but I have to ask from a man's perspective. And I will ask my husband, I'm like, okay, you talk to them in that way. Can they get it? So it's not about being soft. It's just about, or being too harsh on them. You have to understand when is the right time for them to tell how they're feeling. Or sometimes your actions will tell you, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not, I always say it's not so much of what I want, but in terms of, what they say they want is their action matching. You no, know? if they're going to practice and they're like eager to go, it's not me enforcing it. That's a, that's something that they want, but it's like oh, I'm so tired. I just want to play a video game or whatever. And you start to question, okay, okay, you've done that once or twice. So what's going on? You know that communication, that open with it, and then that's where you can engage the coach. And this is what I'm noticing. What's going on? Where that open communication comes in. So it's not about building soft boys or soft girls. It's just about understanding that individual child. And if me myself is not getting the opportunity to learn it, then how can I be pissed off or expect somebody else to know them right away when they're just on them twice a week or practicing with them, and maybe every weekend we play a game with it for a few hours you know what i mean mm -hmm. it takes a while mm -hmm. unless they've been with that same coach that trainer for a certain period of time you know up front they're nice and pretty and handsome and whatever but behind the scenes they might be different so it has to be an open conversation but not how are you i'm fine conversation there's a way to get to it and sometimes give them time give them time mm -hmm. to go through the emotion because we're always quick to want to give a resolution okay you're hungry you gotta eat you're tired. You gotta sleep. Da, 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 da. I, I do that sometimes too. And I realize, okay, I need to scale back. Okay. Yeah. They know when they're tired. They know when they're hungry. As long as there's food, they have a bed. Like, give them that time to go through those emotions and have that open communication or relationship with them. Because I don't want to foster it because being in the back of the world to make it overtake my relationship with my kids. Because I'm a parent first. They still have chores to do, they still have responsibilities. 
they still have homework, they still have family things to do. Basketball is just something else that we do in addition to it. And I don't want that to be that's all who they are. Right. And I think that's mm. where sometimes some parents we some parents I've seen have gotten that lost in it. Mm. Like especially during COVID, there was nothing to do. Oh, I don't know. What else is there to do? Hey, what else do they like to do? What else did they do before that? You know, and, and if you didn't know, that's okay. But that's a good time to figure something else out. Because we're multi-talented human beings. All of us have more than one. So use it. And that's just, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but I'm just saying like, it's just more conversation and just being honest with it. And it's hard for us to internalize our own emotions and see our mindset and accept it. But if we are 100% willing to take that hard look at ourselves, to understand our kids makes it easier that even though they're in grade 10 now, they were good in grade six and grade 10, they're struggling. That's human nature. It doesn't mean they suck. It doesn't mean they're soft. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean whatever. It just means you're going through something and give it time, give it time. But jumping from team to team, coach to coach also may hinder that because it doesn't give them time to foster how to lose mm -hmm. and how to win because they have to lose badly sometimes. I <laughs> to to really learn from it right and yeah. sometimes when they lose it hurts us as much as it hurts them right so we got to go through the, it's a i don't know it's a growth spurt you probably probably maybe i think mostly a lot of athletes go through these the knee growth slash lecture whatever it is mm -hmm. growth thing. yeah our oldest went through that and that was a big opening eye like, wow i don't remember ever learned like realized i was getting tall but because you're actively in sports, you see that more and that's a setback and you're learning from it. You take time to learn. So for me, I'm inquisitive. I ask a lot of questions, but I also learn to sit back and listen. And I think there are some parents that want quick results and I don't blame them because everything mm -hmm. you see on social media is beautiful. 15 seconds, 20 seconds flash of all the shots going in. Why can't you get your shots in? Why can't you do this? I'm just like, oh my God, everybody's different. The game is how many minutes, how many quarters? Mm -hmm. right but you only see 30 seconds of it mm -hmm. so don't rush the process get to know the kid it's that way when you're talking to the coach the coach can better understand how your child is they will understand them from a player perspective but if you want them to know as a personal take time as well too because they will take time to get to know them too and that it's a it, it's a i don't know a three-way relationship i call that the triangle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everybody has a corner and we gotta Mishmash sure. it together. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, sure. I, does that answer your question? Because I can no, go off it. It does. And it's, you know, it's the world of youth basketball now is, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, A lot of times, you know, things like politics and different things like that, like you think that you need to get to the NBA and get to college to see these politics. Well, now we're in a situation where, you just, you see it the everywhere politics kind of kind of have trickled down all the way to youth basketball now and mm -hmm. you know we're starting to look at these 13 14 15 year olds as dollar signs now yeah so my so my question yes. to you is yeah. i think this is a i think this is a good question my question <laughs> to you is this why in your experience and your opinion as well why is there not more awareness clinics and trainings for coaches who are dealing with these kids so young? And why is there not the same thing for parents? Like, I'll give you an example. Yeah. And I'll let you answer right after this, but I'll give you an yeah. example. If I'm going to join an organization and we're going to be the parents of this youth team and we're going to support them. I feel like there should be some kind of conference, some kind of seminar to help the parents understand that, yo, this is what we need to do when it comes to, am I somewhere in the ballpark? I see yes. you smile. I see you oh. smiling. Oh my goodness. Literally. Um, the thing is, parents don't want to hear it from, some don't, some are naive. I personally have, tried for the past five years I do these virtual meets and when I first started I think I maybe I had about 15 people hop on 
and it was just it wasn't recorded it was just more like hey you don't have to show your face you don't you can put any name you want on it but it was just an avenue for you to come and say hey i'm a parent my kids play sports okay that's the one commonality that we have this is what i were experiencing and every um session i had a specific topic about it i stopped doing that early last year 2023 because nobody was joining and it was free i wasn't charging or anything it was just hey come in Let's share our joys and our grievances together so we can learn and support ourselves so we can better support our kids. It just eventually started whittling because it becomes more of competition. You know, mm. my kid got is looked at here. My kid is on this team. My kid wears this jersey or my kid wants it but can't get it. Like it just became too personal, I will say. So, and again, everybody makes their own decisions. So I felt like I didn't want to enforce anybody and say, this is good, this is bad, this is this. But there are a lot of resources out there for mentorships for for kids. And I think that there are some coaching clinics as well too. But you're right, the parent side of it. And I think the reason why the parent is minimized because we don't go, we don't, we don't do it. You can't tell me what to do, how to raise my kid. There's nothing new that I you can tell me that I don't know. And it'd be like, okay, but what is the journey that you're on? Like the, these individuals know it, have gone through it, or can they help you and your child? Like, why are you not taking, even if it's $20 or $10, take it. Like I'm soaking up as much knowledge as I can to be able to help my kid and whoever else wants it as much as I can. Because like I said, our journey is different. But from the parents' side of it, it's it's really bad. I used to have like a link on my website that had like resources that you can go to um, with regards to whether it be mentorship or mental health or even nutrition, eating, health, strength and conditioning. And because I built the website myself, I can see how many clicks each page gets. That was the, all those sections that were for parents, that's the word that got the least clicks. It's mm. weird. Mm. But the section that has this team, that club, this player, those got more clicks. <laughs> so it was like, so I looked at it, I'm like, you want the glory, but we don't want the work to it. And those who actually are getting those things, they don't come to the forefront. There are some parents that are really learning and doing the best that they can but they don't share everybody hold on to what they have maybe i'm the naive only weird person that's just open up and like hey this is for everybody but mm -hmm. those who are doing it hold on to it they don't share it so it becomes a very sheltered thing yeah nobody's willing to share but when the platform is open very few tap into it and it's it's weird i don't know it's it's weird <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, but, like that. I can't say you have to ask each individual person on that because it's, yeah. I try different ways, and it's just yeah. But you're you you're it. you're at some point is gonna click, and you are you are one of the people that is putting that and putting and spreading the awareness to it. So it's gonna come. Like that's the one thing that I learned. Like it takes a lot of time, a lot of um in certain situations because like. You just want to, a lot of times it's like, it's it's almost the same thing as us being a player, right? The player wants a, a really a really nice jump shot, but you're not yeah. going to get it overnight. So I guess it's the same thing for you as well. Like the awareness is not going to come overnight. So I no, appreciate you. I, yeah. I appreciate you um, taking the time. I got a final question for you, actually. Sure, sure. I got to find a good thing. I pre first of all, Thank you for taking the time. I know you're very busy and Thank you. I just, this, this was very insightful, even for me as a coach, like just understanding that side. Um, what is the number one tip that you can give the parents of high school athletes? High school athletes in Canada, in Toronto, Ontario, school first, honestly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, let's say right now you're in grade 12 even playing basketball since you're in grade six, seven. And when you're all those early ages, you're always making all these highlights and blah, blah, blah. Then you remove them all from your Instagram page because it's no longer cool, blah, blah, blah. School first. Exams are about to start. Start working on your ISUs. 
get that done. If you can go to practice because you have an assignment to do, that's fine. School first. Because as much as everybody keeps telling you you're a student athlete first, if you personally don't believe it in yourself, there's nothing more that we can do about it. Mm. I always tell them, the coaches are doing their job. They're getting paid whether you show up or not, okay? Parents, we have our own job that we do, but you are working towards something. So you as a student athlete, use this time of learning as your way of getting into something that you want to do to it. Your God-given talent that you have cannot be taken away from you. There are players playing all over the world who are professionals. Nobody can take away from them. And it's their job and they have other things aside from it. So do focus on your self-development in school first. For the parents, if your child is in grade 10, grade 12, grade 11, and you know they're playing prep, good job. Keep it up. Um, if their goal to say go to the States, let's say, um, and realistically, not nobody has reached out. You haven't even looked at SATs. I know people are saying it's not required, but it's still required depending on the school that you want to get into. So you got to educate yourself on that. Um, the team that you're on, don't travel. You just do only local tournaments, but you're looking to go to the States. Okay, then summer's coming. You're going to travel to the States. Second question, being in high school right now, you're in grade 11. When you go to the state, you're going to be playing as if you're in grade 10. So understand mm -hmm. that part of it. That yes, those kids there will look older, but there's a thing called recalcification that you may have a 16 year old playing in grade nine, but they reclassify. Understand that student comes first. So because if anything happens, you still have that education to fall on to apply through the colleges here or universities here to get in and still play. You can play at your university. You can play at UFT. You can play at McMaster. You can play at Carleton. You have to uh, try out. You have to be scouted the same way. And those are also professional. But at the same time, because you're in high school, what is it that they want to do when high school is done? What program do they want to get into? What line of career do they want to get? How do they want to make those millions and the picture that they show with their whatever money picture that they do? How do they want to make those money? Find a way to let them understand courses and programs that they can take to get into those degrees or those courses in those schools. And those schools, if they have a sports there, go to games at those schools. Watch those games on their YouTube channel. See how that program works. Do a tour of those schools. Get to know the school that you want to get to. As much as you want to get to the state, do it here as well, too. Because that is way that you're building yourself to say, my kids still love sports. I still want them to do regardless of what. And it's okay, whatever level you're at. You can go to Humber and still be a professional. You can go to UFT and still be a professional. Somebody going to Humber is probably much more highly uh, respected than somebody going to school in Buffalo in the boondocks of, let's say, Olean, <laughs> Buffalo, Ontario or something. You know what I mean? So each school has a different level. So if you're in high school, your time is not done. Your time is not up. It's still a journey. Don't give up on yourself, especially if your hoop dreams is not going the way you want to. What else are you besides that? You know, what else mm. do you like to do? When you're in the game, you're on the bench. Are you the loudest one? Maybe you want to get into broadcasting and talk about it. Are you the one? Are you comfortable when they ask when people ask questions? Because sometimes after games, I'll ask players questions. I'm like, I want to practice media talk with you. There's different ways. Play the sports, but don't make it be the only thing. If you're at that level, you realize, oh my God, I might not get to where I am. Besides that, where is a sports helping you get to? Not where you're going to take the sports to take you to. It's got to be a two-way. I don't know if that makes sense. But for me as a parent, I want them to realize you're an athlete, that you're a human being first, and you're a student. And to me, as a most school, education is definitely important. Even if you become a plumber, you still have to get certification. So you still have to learn something. So education is important. Those life skills definitely matters.